Hey friends, who's here? <laughs> Chat roll. So that's my sticky message. So remember, like, oh, okay, no one's here. Like, over animate. Right? Okay. Like, because you're on like video. Okay. So you want to like, um, it's it's yeah. like it's a you I'm, gotta. I'm a little animated. I, I'm getting better. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I tell everybody that anyone I train for video, it's yeah. like you just gotta. Okay, we got some people on. Who's here? Who's here? Hello. Uh, type in your names and let me know you're here. Uh, we are looking forward to seeing you. All right, so now there's also, um, oh. Hi, Autumn. Hi, Janine. Hi, Sarah. Hi, John. Hi, Eileen. How is everybody today? Hi, is that Lisa? Hi, Lisa. How are you? So this is Al. Al is going to be our septic expert today. He is our septic expert, but he's going to be sharing it with you today. Hi, our, I mean, is that Amandine? Is that how you say that? What a pretty name. Okay, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to go get a block so that Al's head is in the middle. <laughs> Hi, Magdalia. How are you? So, Al can say hello to you for a couple of minutes. Hi. <clears throat> this is uh, Al Rivet. Uh, I have been in the septic business for, oh, Lordy, uh, since uh, 1995 and before, actually. Um, I was in the septic business when I was a youngster, um, although I didn't know it. My dad uh, built uh, several uh, systems uh, with us before they were permittable. Oh, my so, goodness. Yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. See, I just learned something. He's my uncle. Yes, disclosure. Like, just like when you guys are buying and selling a house, right? Disclosure. The septic expert is my Uncle Al. There we go. There's Lena saying, hi, Uncle Al. Hi, hi Mayor. How are you? Is that how you, I say your name? You guys are, uh, hi, William Macari. How are you? Okay, so it looks like we've got a good group here. I'm uh, guessing either uh, you are loving I want to learn a lot about septic um, or you got some, you got to get your hours in, but I know you can get your hours anywhere you want. So you've got some interest in septic. So let us start. Okay. So welcome guys. For those of you who are new and I love it, there's some newbies here. And I, and I think that's so awesome because I've been doing these videos with you guys once a month uh, for the last, I think two, three years. So we have gone over a lot of things. And one of the one of the things I know about your board is you have an awesome board and they support you a lot. And I, uh, you know, and I want you guys to know that we at Agent Rising are here for you too. So if there's ever a question that comes up after we're done and you're like, I know I think they said this, but I don't remember, we are always here, right? And I'm gonna type in my email address right now. You guys can take it and and um and, and and type and you can let me know and I can reach out for Al. Al also works as a realtor in my office. Okay. All right. So Sarah, you're so cute. How are you? All right. So I am going to turn this over to him, but I'm just going to cover a few things just to, you know, for you for you new friends that are here and for Al. So when I ask you a question, a lot of times it's going to take a few minutes before the answers come in. So Al's gonna keep talking and he will circle back over to what it is that we're talking about, okay? And I will be helping man him on that, all right? And the second part of that is that I need you to answer those questions because I, ultimately I have to know that you are here, okay? So when I send in the list later, what I need to show is that, you know, you 15 people were here from the beginning, you 15 people were here all during it for when I asked all my awesome questions that when Al does, right? And then you're gonna be here at the end so that we can we can say yes, you were here the whole time, 
right? So that's one of the, the guidelines of live webinars. And the, the great thing about live webinars is that you are able to ask any questions at any time. We have the chat roll going the whole time. I'm going to be manning the chat, the chat box so that I can be seeing what's going on. Also, that k to agentrising.com, there's a spot there on the box. You have a box on your screen that says ask a question. I will have my email open. And actually, Sarah, Sarah, do me a favor. Go to that chat box, right? And I want you to test it for me. So what I want you to do is send me an email where it says ask a question, okay? So you're gonna be my, my tester, all right? So I have my, my phone open and I'm going to have it ready so that when you are, and I'll let you know when I get it, okay? So that we could just check how, what the time frame is. All right, so <laughs> it's not there yet. All right, so anyways, we're gonna turn over to the slides and, and again, Al's gonna take you through this. I have been through, um, this program a couple of times with him. It is extensive in its information. We will put, actually, uh, I will, everybody who has logged in with your email, if you let me know, I will send you a copy of it if you want. Um, we can put it up on the Agent Rising site. Is that okay with you? Sure. Yeah, so we'll put it up on the Agent Rising site um, after the after the, <laughs> after the the class, okay? So anyway, I have not gotten that. So Sarah, I don't know if you sent it. Um, it's not there. So when it gets there, we'll get there. But anyways, that you can use that box. You can use a chat roll and, uh, and we'll take it from there. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to turn it over. I, as I said, he, Al has been a, uh, he has done uh, probably hundreds of, of title five um, inspections for me. Well, thousands in, in general, but probably hundreds for bold and bold. Yeah. Was my, so my, my real estate company yeah. and he, uh, he has spoken throughout Rhode Island and Massachusetts. He is considered a septic expert and uh, his information is thorough and, uh, you know, he's very passionate about this. So, you know, we as real estate agents oftentimes are not super passionate about it because we're like, whatever, right? As long as it passes, we don't care, right? So that is not how Al looks at this. And, in, and now I know why, because it was in his bones from his dad. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm going to turn over to the slide now and I'm going to let him take over. And I am, oops, I don't want that. I want, I don't want screen share. I want to put the slides on. Okay. So anyway, my friends, we're going to put the slides on. And if anybody has any questions, you just please feel free to, to talk with us. Okay. So we're going to put the chat over here. Okay. And you're going to do the next button. Okay. So okay. that's going to be your button right there. Okay. Okay. Very so. Good. Anyways, oh, Sarah, my instructions were, you guys have, it says that there's an ask questions box on your screen. If you ask, if you just ask me a question, I can just double check that it's going through. Um, but again, you can also use the chat roll. Okay. So take it away, Albert. Hi, everybody. I'm so uh, happy to be here. Um, I really enjoy these sessions because um, I, I know that they're valuable to realtors because I am a Title V inspector and I am a realtor. So um, having been in the business for over 25 years, I appreciate uh, your need to know about uh, septic systems and Title V inspections. So that's one of the main purposes of uh, why I do this and why the, comp my, the company pays me to do it. I owned this company for a number of years and sold it in 2014 and stayed on as an employee. And most of my duties are to do septic education to real estate companies because probably 90% of our referrals for Title V inspections come from real estate companies. So it's, it's a value to us as a company and it's a, a value to you, you all as realtors because it's, it's important that you know um, some or all of this information that we're going to talk about today. So um, I really enjoy doing it. I have fun doing it. And um, it's, um, it's a, to be very honest, it's a little easier when I have all you beautiful faces sitting in front of me. Uh, but um, we'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll try to be very animated and um, I'll just imagine your, your animations from, from all of you all. Okay. <laughs> and questions at any time, please ask and, away. And I am stepping out for one second because I, some people are having difficulty getting on. So I'm going to be right there taking care of that. 
Al is, Al's got the Al's got the floor. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. So. Okay, so we made it from slide one to two. We're, we're, we're doing well so far. <laughs> a little bit of information about our company. Um, Ken is the uh, Ken Huru is the manager of the uh, Title Five inspection business. The name of the company is All Clear Septic. I, as I said, I was the owner. Now I am, am an employee. We have a number of inspectors. We have uh, years of experience in the business. Our main office is in Norton. Uh, we have uh, an office in Mattapoisett, which is my office, and we have a separate operation up in Maine. We are teachers at University of Rhode Island for the Functional Inspection Program. Uh, we're certified in Mass and Rhode Island to be inspectors. We're licensed wastewater operators, and we're also certified in a number of these IA technologies. That's innovative and alternative technologies. We'll talk more about that a, a little further on. Those are, those are technologies that you need if you want to live in a sen environmentally sensitive area. So your septic system has to be better. Um, so it's, I, it, I bring up the old Lord and Taylor thing. If, if you want to live in an area near the water or near a, an environmentally sensitive area, you need to spend more money to live there because uh, it's just like I talk about Lord and Taylor. And I say, if you want to look really good, you go to Lord and Taylor. If you want to look just okay, then you go to um, I don't know, Marshalls or Walmart or one of those places. So it's similar with a septic system. If you want to live in a really nice area and look really good, you have to spend more money to live there. So you, the stuff coming out of your septic system has to be much better product so that it doesn't damage the environment. Okay, we'll talk, like I said, we'll talk more about that. Okay. Uh, I am today's uh, presenter. Um, I have uh, more than 25 years experience, Mass Title Five Inspector, Rhode Island, uh, Functional Septic Inspector and Instructor. Okay. So an outline of what we're gonna look at today is septic systems and their components. We're going to look at Title V inspections. We're going to look at the process of a Title V inspection, basic Title V regulations, Title V outcomes. There are four outcomes of a Title V inspection. Maintaining a septic system, do's and don'ts of owning a septic system, effluent filters. Many people don't know what that is. We'll show you pictures and explain it further. Laundry filters, the same thing, all to do with septic systems. Risers and questions and answers. We, we don't hold questions and answers till the end. We welcome them all during the presentation. It makes it makes this presentation much more interesting if we're answering the questions that are on your mind. So I'm going to ask you one right now, and that is uh, how many people own or have owned their own septic systems? If you do, if you do, um, then this, this uh, presentation will, will be doubly valuable for you. Okay, you'll learn a lot about your own septic systems and you'll learn about the stuff that you're dealing with as realtors. Okay, so ask your questions anytime and let me know if you own or have owned a septic system. All right, so the goal of an on-site wastewater treatment system is to treat the wastewater before it reaches the groundwater. So treatment, a lot of the treatment takes place in this septic tank. So everything that you flush down in any of your drains in your home come, usually comes out of the house via one pipe in the cellar wall. It's a, it's a four inch pipe. Older ones are cast iron. The newer ones are white PVC plastic. So when you're doing your walk arounds, uh, when you've listed a home, you've all noticed the, the sewer uh, pipe going through the cellar wall. So everything comes out usually one four inch pipe. If you have a larger home, there could be more than one. And in, in very large homes, it's possible that there'd be more than one septic system. So that's just for your information. So everything comes out of the house via one four inch pipe into a septic tank 
that's either usually either a thousand gallons. The older ones are a thousand gallons, and the newer ones are fifteen hundred gallons or more, depending on the size of the home. Out of the septic tank, everything goes to a distribution box, usually. This is the majority of your systems are going to look like this. And then into a drain field. So there's a certain amount of treatment of this stuff that we send down the drain in the septic tank, a little bit in the distribution box, a fair amount of treatment in the drain field, and most of the treatment of the stuff we send down the drains takes place underneath the leach field in the soil before it reaches the groundwater. Okay. So this, this sketch gives you a very good idea of why we have septic systems and what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to purify and clarify anything that we send down the drain before it hits the groundwater because Everything that we send down our drains hits the groundwater eventually. There's groundwater everywhere. There's groundwater underneath your home. There's groundwater underneath this building. It all, de it just depends on how deep the groundwater is. Okay. And, and to show you why it's important to, for us to purify what we send down the drain, it does hit the groundwater eventually. And some properties have a well. Um, on, on the same property and you're, you're drinking the, what's in the water table. So it behooves us to do a good job at, um, making sure that our septic systems are working properly and doing their job. Okay. This is a, a, a similar sketch. It's just a little clearer. And we'll talk about a few things when we, while we have this sketch up. Again, everything that, comes out of the house, usually comes out by a one four inch pipe into a septic tank. There's a distribution box in this area and a leach field. So uh, again, to, uh, to explain how a septic system operates and what it's supposed to do, it's supposed to purify and clarify the stuff that we send into the leach field and then into the soils below it, and then eventually into the groundwater. So Katie asked me to discuss um, percolation tests and uh, soil evaluations. So when, when a system is being built, uh, an engineer has to dig a couple of holes in, in the area. And before this septic system was here, the engineer had to dig a couple of holes in the soil. Um, usually they're about anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20 feet deep. And the engineer has to log what types of soils are in, in the ground on this particular property. And the engineer house also has to establish where the groundwater is, okay? So Katie asked me again to differentiate the different times of years to determine water table. Water table can fluctuate anywhere from right at surface. Um, we've all been in wetlands and been in properties that have wetlands around them. Um, so water table could be right at surface or it could be a few inches down, or it could be a foot down, or two feet down, or 10 feet down, or in, in Mashpee, for instance, there are water tables there that are 30 feet below the surface. So, uh, so water tables and soils differentiate um, pretty much in, in any area that you're in. Um, the closer to uh, a particular property, chances are the water tables and soils are, are similar, uh, if you go from one neighborhood to another, they could be pretty different. If you go from one town to another, they could be different, pretty different or similar. So um, the reason why engineers have to do soil evaluations and percolation tests are because that soils and water table differentiate. So they have to establish where the water table is on this particular property and what types of soils are here. So the engineer takes that information and then he designs a septic system according to the rules, the state rules, and according to what the size of the house is. So septic systems are designed in a residential property per number of bedrooms. In a commercial building, they're designed either by square footage, by number of people working there, 
or in the case of a restaurant, a number of seats and tables available inside the restaurant. So if you have a small restaurant in a rural area where there are septic systems, uh, the septic system will be fairly small. If you have a large restaurant with 100 seats or more, then that septic system necessarily is going to be much larger. Same thing with a residential home, a three-bedroom system, which is a standard. Uh, minimum size for a septic system is a three-bedroom system. And uh, so, again, the septic system is going to, the size of it is going to depend on number of bedrooms. So, necessarily, a, a five-bedroom home is going to be, the septic system is going to be larger than a three-bedroom home. And uh, not that common, but, I mean, there are 10-bedroom homes, uh, if, if you've listed any, uh, uh, in the more affluent areas along the waterfront and the older the older mansions and, and so forth, there are, we've been to uh, septic inspections with 10 or 12 bedroom homes. And some of them have had more than one septic system. So we'll go over some of that when we talk about um, the actual Title V inspections and uh, show you more information on that. So again, the importance of purifying the stuff before it hits the groundwater. Again, this particular property has a well, and uh, they're drinking uh, or using the water from the groundwater, okay? So it's a pretty common sense thing, uh, how septic systems work and what they're supposed to do. Okay. So I usually have a... a when I'm doing these classes in person, I usually get a, a bunch of questions at this point. So uh, I'm just waiting for Katie to come in with a bunch of questions and we'll answer them uh, one at a time. So what does a modern on-site wastewater treatment disposal system do? So that's a long word for a septic system, on-site wastewater treatment disposal system. And, and part of that wording on that is that in, in any property that has a septic system, Anything that we flush down the drains stays on the property, unlike a building where there is city or town sewerage available. Everything that you flush down the drain in those properties goes to a sewer treatment plant. And if you've never been to a sewer treatment plant, make an effort to go visit one. Um, they usually welcome visitors, and uh, they might even give you a tour. Um, it is quite a, uh, an education to see some of these large municipal sewer systems. There's a river of effluent coming in from all the surrounding houses in, in the city and town. And likewise, there's a river of pu purified liquid leaving and going into some river, waterway, um, bay, ocean, or whatever. Everything that we flush down our drains goes into the environment. So again, I'm re I'm repeating myself, but we have to do a good job at what we send down the drains, a good job of purifying it. Okay. Hi, we had a few people Questions. that wanted to nice. we had a few people that wanted to join and they're having difficulties. So okay. it's so good that we were both here because we were able to tackle that bad boy. <laughs> Hi, I use Laura's link. She just sent it to okay. Um so all right, is everybody okay now? Is anybody having a problem? Okay, so I, again, I'm gonna type in, I gave you one of my emails. Actually, and you can text me too. I'm gonna to type this in, okay? So if there's any problems, I'm sorry to interrupt this program. Sometimes we lose, you know, it's, this is not a perfect system, you know, and maybe for the next time we might use Zoom because Zoom might be a little bit easier. Okay, back to Al. Okay, do I need to re show any of those previous slides as far as the sketches? No, they can watch us on replay. They get all the replay. Oh, good. So oh, wonderful. you just keep on rolling. Wow, you can watch it on a... Over and over again. <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> on a cold February night, cold snowy February night. <laughs> all right. So an on-site on wastewater treatment disposal system, just a long word for a septic system. What does it do? It collects solids and liquids. Everything from the home is collected there. Dishwasher, washing machine, toilets, sinks, bathtubs, and anything that you send down the drain. Um, so in the beginning, in the, in the septic tank, the separation that takes place, solids are separated from liquids. And we'll show you a little sketch of that that will make that clearer. Um, 
separation of solids and liquids, this treatment that takes place in the septic tank. A septic tank is a home for our bacteria, and they are our friends. Uh, these are good bacteria that break down what we send into our septic tanks, uh, mostly our human waste. Okay, they, they do a pretty good job at breaking that down as long as we treat them nicely and we don't abuse them. And we'll, we'll get into that a little further also. So after what we send down the drain into the septic tank is there for our period of the theory is two days. We like it to stay there for two days for the bacteria to have, have their chance at it. It then sends it out to a distribution box, usually, uh, sometimes a pump chamber, but usually a distribution box, and then out into the drain field. So if you think back to that prior slide, septic tank, distribution box, drain field, then into the soil and into the water table. Okay, um, so we'd like our septic systems to operate properly, so hopefully it does all these things that we just spoke about in an environmentally safe way. The two big thrusts of the uh, Title V inspection law, which was implemented uh, in 1995, were that the, the two main uh, criteria our Title V inspections were to protect homeowners and to protect the environment. Uh, protecting homeowners meant that uh, buyers would have the results of a Title V inspection before they bought a property so that they would know uh, the condition of the septic system. And then if our the Title V inspection, uh, by virtue of the four categories, pass, conditional pass, needs further evaluation by the Board of Health or failure, depending on which one of those categories, then we are protecting our environment by making sure that our septic systems are working properly. And if they're not, then the town and the state will require that they be repaired so that they are protecting the environment and they are operating properly. So we already spoke about this. Any property, commercial or residential, that has a septic system, everything that we flush down the drain stays on the property as opposed to going to a sewer treatment plant. So we, again, it's just, just to emphasize that we want to make sure our septic systems are operating properly and doing a good job. It's our responsibility. Okay, different types of on-site wastewater treatment disposal systems. Okay, and again, to repeat, that means septic systems. Different types of septic systems. Older type, outdated type is a cesspool. So if you hear the word cesspool and you're listing a property or before you've listed a property, if you hear that word, think dollars. Okay, normally they have to be replaced. They're old, they're substandard, not that many of them pass an inspection. More and more towns are starting to require that they be upgraded at the time of a property transfer, okay? That the process is begun to uh, upgrade a cesspool to a conventional Title V septic system. Again, because they're old and they're substandard. They don't do a very good job of treating wastewater and um, we use a lot more water now than when cesspools were installed. So back 40, 50, 60 years ago or more, cesspools could handle what we sent down the drain. We use much more water than that now. So um, they're not built to handle the amount of water that we use. When I was young, which was a few years ago, um, on a Saturday night, that was my bath night. I took one bath a week while I was a youngster. So that's just uh, uh, to give you uh, an idea of, you know, how much less water we used back then. Uh, I don't recall having a dishwasher. Uh, I'm pretty sure we had a washing machine um, and so forth. So uh, we use a lot less water now. Cesspools don't do a very good job. They're, they tend to overflow. They tend to be in the water table and they tend not to pass an inspection. So think money when you hear the word cesspool. A conventional septic system is what we just saw on those prior sketches and slides. Septic tank, distribution box, and drain field. 
The majority of systems are like that. You're going to be seeing more and more of these innovative and alternative systems as we become more sensitive to our environments, and especially if you're li living in an environmentally sensitive area near a stream, brook, river, waterfront, bay, ocean, or any area that's environmentally sensitive. Okay. Pressure dosing and pressure dispersal systems are septic systems that require a pump. We'll uh, get into that a little further on. Um, if, if you've ever been in the neighborhood and you've seen these mounded systems, um, how do I go back on this slide, Kate? What? How do I go backwards on the slide? You go like this. Oh, previous. I got it. <laughs> he just wants to say hi again. <laughs> so um, what was I talking about? Okay. So if you're in a prop, if you're in a neighborhood or you're listing a property and there is a mound in the yard, um, a mound in the yard, either front yard or backyard, and it's got one of those white candy cane vent pipes sticking up out of the ground. And that system has a pump in it. So there would be a septic tank. There would be another septic tank right after it. And you would be pumping up into this raised drain field. Now, why do we have a, dra a raised drain field? Well, that particular property has a water table that's up in this area somewhere. So the bottom of a drain field has to be four feet above water table. So if your water table were, say, two feet below grade, then the bottom of your leach field will be up here. So how is it going to get up there? You have to build a leach field up out of the ground. So you're going to have about a three, three and a half foot mound in the yard. And the old expression of it flows downhill, you got to add a couple of letters to that. We're not, we're kind of sensitive to Foul language, I guess is what it is. So the old expression, it flows downhill. Well, it doesn't flow uphill. So if, you're, if your property requires that you have a drain field that's above ground, how, how is it going to get there? It doesn't flow uphill. You're going to have to pump up to it. Okay. So in any property that you're listing or you're dealing with has a mound in the yard, it's going to have a pump. It's going to have moving parts. Okay. Pressure dosing systems. Okay. That usually brings up a bunch of questions, so punch them in, type them in. And why don't you tell them what some of the questions are? Um, well, some of the questions are um, to do with um, these mounds, and uh, we we get questions like, well, supposing now that you, you, you have an inspection done on a property that you've listed and um, the system fails. And the engineer advises that, well, now that this old system fails because it's overused uh, uh, and probably possibly in the water table, you're going to have a mound in the yard. And you present that information to your buyer. And the buyer says, well, I'm not interested in buying this property if it's going to have a mound in the yard. And and some of you have probably run into that. And if you haven't, you you probably will. So we call them mount cesspools. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they have a mount in their yard. So now you understand the reason for these mounds. And if you if you see one in a neighborhood, you're probably going to see others. So if you're listing a home and the Title Five inspector tells you that it fails, and you look around and you see several mounds, you're probably going to have one too because water table generally stays similar in a, in a given neighborhood or area. And so what's the good news, bad news on that as far as from a realtor's perspective? Okay, so the good news is, we'll get back to the Lord and Taylor thing. If you want to look good, right, you go to Lord and Taylor, you just have to spend more money. If you want to, you know, if you want to look just okay, then you'll go to Walmart or Kmart or some of those places. They don't allow me to do shopping. So if those <laughs> if those examples make sense to you... <clears throat> So, he has eight daughters. He doesn't ever shop. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh so, so if if you want to look better, if your buyer says, well, I don't want to have a mound in my yard, you can spend more money and lower that mound down. If you build a septic system that does a better job, that puts out a purer product, then you don't have to stay 
so far away from the water table because your system is putting out a purer product. Okay. Okay. It's, so you get two questions here. Lisa okay. said, you said two septic systems for a pressure dosing system. And then Risa is Risa. Is that how you say your name? Another pretty name. In other words, mounds are indicative of a high water table. Correct. Right. That, and what about Lisa? So, so Risa is right on the ball on that one. Yes. High water table. Yes. But they will be getting a new system. So that's the good news, right? They'll have a new system, even though it's, it's a mound. Yep. And, um, they make great places for picnic tables. Um, yep. And then the yeah, but the bad news is that they may it may not be as attractive as they thought it was without spending more money. Correct, correct. And usually in those situations, the buyer you have to get the buyer involved in spending the extra money. Usually the seller will agree to fix the system and spend uh, you know the the minimal amount, which right. would be a mounted system. Um, so, and what about Risa? Like, what about her double the the dosing system, pressure dosing? She said two septic systems of pressure dosing. Um, pressure distribution and pressure pressure dosing. So I'll show you an example of a pressure dispersal system coming up. Once I show you the slide, we'll talk a little more about it. But pressure dosing simply means that it has a pump in it, and you usually are pumping up into one or one of those mounds. So again, you can lower that mound if you spend more money on your septic system. If you if you buy one of those systems that does a better job, then you can lower that mound down. You can usually bring it right to grade so that it won't be a mound. Okay, so that's that's the good news part of uh, us protecting the environment and staying away from the water table. There's more and more technology, new technologies coming out all the time that uh, will accomplish that. Will lower that mound down for you. Innovative and alternative systems, they're called. Okay, so uh, the first system that we spoke about were cesspools. This is a pretty fancy version of a cesspool. Normally, there was just a hole dug in the ground, and they, the hole was surrounded with field stone, usually. And uh, that's pretty much what your septic system consisted of. It could be anywhere from two to five, six feet in diameter and anywhere from two to five, six feet deep, usually. And they weren't they weren't this fancy looking. They were just a hole in the ground surrounded by field stone. One pipe coming out of the house into it, everything dumped into the cesspool, and that's where your treatment took place and where uh, the dispersal, dispersal into the surrounding uh, ground took place. Not a lot of treatment, not a lot of purification, and uh, oftentimes, uh, or enough times, these systems would be in the water table, so contaminating the environment. So not many of them pass. They're old. They tend to be full and overloaded, or they tend to be in the groundwater. So again, not that many of them pass, and more and more towns are starting to require that they be upgraded at a property transfer. Okay, next next system uh, better than a cesspool would be a system with a septic tank and a leach pit. Um, they're sometimes called beehives, uh, seepage pits, leach pits. They all mean the same thing. So this is a conventional septic system, septic tank and a leach pit. A leach pit is very similar to a cesspool. They're normally uh, concrete structures. Uh, they're six foot in diameter, and they're either four or six feet deep. When The reason that they're called beehives is that they're all perforated in the sides. So just like a conventional septic system, everything out of the house into the septic tank, two days of treatment, hopefully, and then the septic tank dumps it into the leach pit. When these leach pits are put in, the hole is dug. A truck will lower this concrete structure into the ground, and then it'll be surrounded with two to four feet of inch and three quarter stone. And that is what your leach system consists of, leach pit. They can pass an inspection. Uh, if they fail an inspection, since 1995, you cannot put a new one in. You have to put in a conventional leach field like we saw in the previous slide. The reason for that is, wow, 
Um, I don't know where that happened. Um, the reason for that is um, the reason for that is that it's their older technology. Um, they tend to uh, they tend to fail. They fit, they clog up in the bottom and then they start clogging up the sides. So uh, if this if this leach pit were full up to the inlet pipe, then it would be in failure. Okay. So if you have one and it fails, you can't put a new one in. You have to have an engineer design a leach field, which is higher up in the ground, away from the water table, and has more leaching area. Okay. Um, let's see. Something happened to my uh, slide presentation here. Let's see if I can get it back for you. Okay. Let me see if I can get Kate here to help me technologically. Uh, hold on, don't go away. I'm still here, don't go away. Start uh, punching in your questions while I'm doing this. Thank you. My system changed, changed a little bit. Need some technological help. I'm kind of a dinosaur when it comes to uh, technology and computers and so forth. I know you, you didn't notice that. You all thought I was old because I have white hair. The only reason <laughs> I have white hair is because I, I color it white. Because <laughs> Well, we already told him that he has eight daughters, right? So eight daughters would give anybody no hair to white hair. <laughs> he was like that when the, when the eighth daughter came. He's got a son, too. Yeah. So we don't want to forget about him. But the eight daughters is, is uh, what's going to happen. Now, did you answer? Tori has a question about. Oh, okay. Um, she says you'll have cleaner water from the new system. Oh, um, yes. New, new systems naturally do a better job than the older systems. And, again, uh, the stuff coming out of one of those innovative and alternative systems that are required in sensitive areas is pretty close to drinking water quality. Wow. Um, Don't and, drink it though. <laughs> well, you know. Well, honestly, actually, that is the, that is the future, right? It's it's now. It's in California. It's the now. It's the now. It's, it's in California. California. And then the other question is: Is this also called the leach tank? Um, let's see. This is called a leach pit. This is called a septic tank, and this is called a leach pit, a septic, um, a seepage pit, or a beehive. It's a pit, not a tank. Okay. Okay. So I see that Lisa. I see that you're having a fuzzy picture. Um, so I don't know if any, and Marie can, can, so you guys have a fuzzy picture. All right. So what I want you to do is, um, go to the refresh and refresh it and see if it's still fuzzy. Okay. And let's move on to the next slide. Maybe that will help. Okay. Okay. The leech pit picture is kind of fuzzy. The one on the right. Okay. Okay. Did you finish talking about that? Yes. Okay. So just another sketch of, of a septic system. It's a little clearer as to how uh, it operates. Everything um, that you flush down your drains, washing machines, sinks, toilets, and so forth, comes out one, sep one pipe, one sewer pipe through the cellar wall. You've all seen those on your walk-arounds. Into a tank, into a distribution box. And this is uh, these are leach trenches as opposed to a leach field. Yeah, if this were... Well, it's because the soils are better here, yes. and um, you don't need as much leaching area because the soils are very permeable and water table is low. If if the soils weren't as good, this whole area would be a leach field. You wouldn't have this area, this raised area here. So they can't see a pointer. Oh, they can't? No. Nope. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So and also, we got a question about... Um, I will do this. No, they, they can't see, they can't can't see, see anything. That. Okay. I mean, you can go up here. And draw on it. Do you okay. want to draw on it? So, guys, no. um, just wanted to say they said we have sketches of new technology as you go along. Sketches of new technology. Yes, yes. I do. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes. All right. So, Most definitely. Wow, you guys are on it. You guys are on it like a haunted. You guys. And great questions. And again, make sure you give us your email address and request this slide deck if you want us to email it to you. And otherwise, um, you know, we'll we'll throw it up on the website. You gotta get it there too if you want. But then you're going to go find it. Okay. All right. So to get back to my white hair thing, I, I, I color it white so people have more respect for you. They, <laughs> they think you know what you're talking about when you have white hair. And when you're in the supermarket, they call you sir. Well, McDalia, we can't send it right this second because he's using it. But, and it's only on this computer. But we can send it after we're done. Okay. And then you'll have it for your resources. 
Thank you, Amandine. Okay. All right, so this is a, uh, a conventional septic tank. Um, most people have never seen one. This is uh, one being installed. This is the top of it. Uh, it's a 1500 gallon tank. That's the standard nowadays. Since 1995, you have to install a 1500 gallon tank. Yeah, it's gonna be and costing when you get there, have to between the systems. You can you can cover that when you get there. Okay, you know. sure. Um, so uh, 1500 gallon tank, they usually have three covers on them. And we like to put risers on our covers. A riser is, is like a chimney. Um, and it allows access of the covers of the septic tank right up to grade, okay? It's easier for um, maintenance and inspections and, and less costly. And it's easier for troubleshooting. If you're having a problem in February, you don't have to dig through frost to get to a, a cover to, to clear the the diaper that some visitor sent down the drain, when some home visitor sent down the drain and, and, and clogged up the pipe. So risers on the septic tank. They're, they're 10 and a half feet long, they're five feet wide, and they are five feet deep, okay? That's a standard 1,500 gallon septic tank. And again, um, this thing keeps uh, moving on me uh, technologically, let's see. So. So a septic tank, it's a primary treatment zone, separates solids from liquids. We already spoke about that. Um, we like uh, everything to stay in there two days to get the uh, bacteria to break it down and for things to settle out, okay? We'll show you a sketch that'll make uh, more sense of that. And, uh, okay. Yes. This went back to that again. Okay. I don't know if it's something that I'm doing. Nope, nope. It's just it's old. Okay. So just so you guys know, what happens is this computer is getting old, so it like zooms in for him, and it's scary. It is okay. scary. Okay. So, so I'll um, stay right here. Yep. So we we advise our people, and it's kind of a common sense issue. Don't do a whole bunch of water things in the house at once. Um, take a shower, do a load of laundry, run the dishwasher. Um, and, and uh, you know, flush toilets. It's, it's not a good idea to do all of those things at once. It's not a good idea to do uh, all of your laundry on a Saturday. A lot of people do. Uh, they have that, that new commercial now uh, <laughs> from the NFL, you know, Sunday is laundry day. Well, I'm going, I'm going on that commercial. I'm going to see if I can get on there. Um, who's that uh, quarterback? Uh, Peyton Manning. I, I, I think I know him. I think he can get me on. We don't, we don't want one day to be laundry day. We don't like that. We like you to spread out your laundry over seven days. Uh, make the kids do it. Um, make their, make them do their own once at once, one day a week, assign each kid their own laundry. And, and again, do a little laundry every day. That way you're spreading out your, uh, stuff you're sending down the drain over a seven day period rather than doing all at once. Common sense. Don't overload your septic system. It'll do a better job for you. Okay. When's the best? Also, when's the best time to do a Title Five? That's another question we got. Oh, okay. Um, well, you know, weather permitting. Okay. So the best time to do a Title Five is any time that you need to have it done. That's been our company philosophy for forever. Um, we've done Title Five inspections in some some pretty tough conditions. And, and there are weather conditions that would uh, preclude a Title V inspection. We don't run into it that often in this area. If you're, if you're in upstate Maine or in North Dakota, you might run into uh, six, uh, eight, ten feet of snow, uh, things of that nature. That would preclude a Title V inspection. But in our area, we do septic Title V inspections pretty much year round. So there is, the answer to that question is when you need it done is the best time to do it. If we have uh, a very cold winter with no snow on the ground, then we're going to have quite a bit of frost in the ground. It'll go a foot or two feet of frost. And we've done inspections in those situations. It's difficult and it's more costly. You literally have to jackhammer through the soil because it's as hard as concrete to get to the top of septic components. If you do have a weather situation and a septic uh, inspection cannot be done, the state allows a six-month period in which 
you can do the septic inspection after a property transfer. The yeah. practicality of that they is escrow is, one and a half times. Exactly. And you have to do a bunch of legwork. Yep. The, and, yeah. So if you're doing a mortgage, the banks kind of make their own rules and they're going to make someone, either the seller or the buyer, put one and a half times the cost of a system in an escrow account until that inspection is done. To minimize their risk. To minimize their risk. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You guys, have you had that happen with you? And what have been some of your solutions? Have you ever had anything crazy? Now, Risa has a comment. She says, I've had clients with a high water table near lakes who try to avoid Title V during spring thaw. It doesn't make any difference because of the new way of determining water tables. That's the marbling. Uh, modeling. Yep. Modeling. Huh. Yep. Yep. I think of it like a steak, the marbling. Yeah. But I'm wrong. It's, it's very the similar. Yeah. It's, it's very similar. I have some cool so, pictures of that. Yeah. So uh, in the springtime near a lake, um, it's not going to make any difference because we have to determine where that water table is. And it fluctuates in the seasons and from year to year. It also fluctuates. But um, She asked if there's any logic in, in uh, avoiding spring thaw. Um, no. No, there isn't because it's of like the an old wives' tale. Yeah, because of the new way of determining water table. Okay. Which is nice because that means we could, and I mean, we've heard this over and over again, right? It's been so rainy, it's been this, it's been that. And yeah. so, you know, but the bottom line is, is that they can, the, the soil tells a story. It does, yes. Yep. And we have to, we can't just make up where the water table is or guess at it. We have to prove it. So we have to establish where that water table is. And if we can't establish where it is by, by doing paper uh, research, say at the Board of Health, then in some instances, we have to dig a deep hole and, and have an engineer or soil evaluator tell us where the water table is in relation to the bottom of the leach field. Okay? So what happens inside a septic tank? This is a, an artistic rendering of what happens. Everything comes into the septic tank via that four-inch pipe that we talked about that goes through the cellar wall. And it's usually about a 10 foot run from the foundation to the septic tank. So that's a four inch pipe. Everything we flush down the drain comes in that four inch pipe and it hits a, it hits this T pipe. And the person, the reason for this T pipe is, is that it stops velocity. So when you flush a toilet or send liquid down the drain, there is velocity. This water coming in, this liquid waste and so forth has velocity. It's moving. So. <laughs> Companies that install septic systems are required to put a wall there to stop the water movement and to send it in a downward fashion. It's like it's like a backboard on a basketball. There court. you go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like hitting the backboard. Yep. So, uh, Eileen, what are you trying to say? You said I had at. So, uh, did you do you do you want to expand on that so that we can answer your question? All right, buddy. Keep rolling. Okay. So we want everything to settle out in a septic tank. Okay, she has, she has, she had one that delayed uh, due to ground condition. One delayed due to ground condition. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, give us a little more info on that. And I mean, if we, ha I know five or six or seven years ago, we had flooding around here in septics areas that, that never had water in their cellar or over their septic system or in their septic system had water. So there are uh, there are unusual events that take place, um, and uh, that's a, that's a one shot deal. So if if it were during that flood or or some other situation like that, possibly near the waterfront in one of these major windstorms with high tides, that could happen also. So those are two situations where I could think of. Awesome. Okay, right. so Girl. everything to settle out in our in our septic tank. We want the sludge to settle down to the bottom, the scum to float up to the top. Scum is uh, consists of fats, oils, grease, and hair. Anything that's going to float, anything that's lighter than water. So someone told me last time they they, they pumped my system that it, the scum was pink. Okay. What was that from? Well, it's it's from some detergent or possibly fabric softener or um, could be hair coloring or um, uh, that type of thing. Okay. Pink is usually a uh, fabric softener. So um, 
That brings up a good point. We need to go easy on our fabric softeners, on our hair conditioners, on bleach, and things of that nature. We need to go easy on it. Everybody uses them, but let's not overdo it. We need to provide a safe haven for bacteria in here. They don't like chemicals. They don't like sticky, sludgy things that they can't eat. They like things that they can eat. So if we're sending a lot of stuff down there that they don't like, it's not going to be a good home for them. They're not going to do as good a job, and our septic systems are not going to last long. They don't eat that stuff. They don't eat hair conditioner and fabric softener and bleach and things of that nature. So it gets sent out to the leach field, thus clogging it up. And the chemicals like bleaches and, and so forth, they're going to continue to kill the bacteria even out in the leach field. So easy on the stuff we send down our drains. Got it. More solids going out to the soil absorption system, it says on the bottom, the shorter the system lifespan. The, the professors and the experts at yeah. University of Rhode Island, where we get most of our education and where we teach also, they tell us that if you take good care of your septic system and install a filter in, your, in the outlet of your septic tank, um, then your system is going to last indefinitely as opposed to 16 to 20 years or less. So if we take care of our systems and do a few yeah, septic systems, they should go use a lot of public restrooms. <laughs> <laughs> make the kids, make the teenagers shower outside, even in the wintertime. That was always my philosophy. <laughs> Put an outdoor shower in and make them shower outside in, the, in February. They'll take shorter showers and they won't take as many of them. Grow some character. Grow some character while they're at it. And hey, that's the new thing, you know, cold showers, you, you know, go. and ice baths and all that kind of stuff. Sure. You were ahead of your time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she asked about a filter. Okay. We'll show you some pictures of filters and explain what they do. Um, okay. Conventional septic system distribution okay, box. Hold on one sec. We got some good people here. So what about the enzymes that are recommended by some? And then I just was just answering a question about delayed Title V due to weather. Okay, thanks, thanks. I got it. We got it, Eileen. And, and actually, you answered that one. I've noticed bacteria products to add septic systems by putting into the toilet. Good, bad. So filter, uh, enzymes, uh, uh, little bacteria products. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so the uh, again, the experts at University of Rhode Island and most of your state health departments uh, don't recommend any of those. They do approve some of them, uh, saying that you can use them, that you're allowed to use them, but they don't recommend any of them. Um, so, Katie, you're you're right; shouldn't be needed. Yep. Yeah. the uh, The people at URI tell us tear up a twenty dollar bill and flush it down the toilet. Um, it'll do uh, just as much good or or not do any harm uh, as as some of these additives might do. Okay. Um, sure. <laughs> Burn, yeah. yeah. All right, you keep rolling. I'm sorry. So septic tank distribution box is the next component in the majority of septic systems. This is a new, both of these are new installs of distribution boxes. The one on the left uh, has liquid in it. We have to, when we install one, we have to put water in it to show that the distribution box is equal and that there is equal distribution to all the pipes, three pipes there. So we got someone. She said it was suggested to her that that a pump system suggested a pump system to protect sellers from buyers, deliberately ruining system. Oh, okay. So to pump the system before a property transfer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's 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 recommended. I think is that what you mean, Eileen? So for them to to pump it before they suggested before the. Pump or do you system. think that the that that the, that the buyers are are uh, like trying to sabotage the septic? Hmm. All right, keep rolling. I'm sorry. Yeah, I will, I'll try to clump the questions together. That's that's. I mean, in my many years of doing septic work, I I, I don't think I've run into that. Um, you know, I'm sure it can happen. Uh, the sellers sabotaging a system, um, maybe in a divorce situation, possibly. <laughs> um, but foreclosures doesn't happen that often. Foreclosures are absolutely. Yeah. And generally, just to bring up a, a point for foreclosures, generally speaking in foreclosures, uh, people don't really take good care of the property, and that includes a septic system. So if you're buying a uh, foreclosed property, just have a really good check of the septic system. Awesome. 
Um, so the distribution box does what it says it does. It distributes out to the leach field. Uh, it could be one, two, four, six, eight, ten pipes, depending on the size of the leach field. So a distribution box distributes equally to pipes in a leach field. We like them to be pumped at the time of uh, the septic tank pumping because they get dirty. And they're the last line of defense before your leach field. So so Marilyn says, in Western Mass, it seems always to be protocol to pump as part of the inspection. At, at the Cape, they don't. Um, <clears throat> I think I think that would depend on the town and um, the seller and the buyer more so than than uh, Western versus Eastern Mass. That's my experience, anyway. You might know more than me about that, but uh, some towns require an inspect uh, a pumping at an at the time of inspection. Some towns will say if a system hasn't been pumped in five years, it needs to be pumped. Other towns will say it needs to be pumped at time of inspection unless it's been done very recently. And that brings up a point. Uh, a septic tank cannot be pumped within two weeks of an inspection. That's So before law. two weeks of an inspection. Correct. Yep. So you can't pump it and then have the inspection. Correct. And that Gonna purpose for that is? To, for the inspector to see it under normal operating conditions. Okay. And, and, and that brings up a point. Uh, in the town of Easton, uh, if you have a foreclosed property or a vacant property, and it's been vacant for six months, the town of Easton will not accept a past Title V inspection report. They're going to require that we submit a needs further evaluation by the health department. There's four four boxes on page one. They're going to require we send in a needs further evaluation. They're going to require that that system be operating for six months under normal conditions, and then another inspection done, and then they will accept a pass report after after a property has been active for six months. That brings up a problem with banks. So banks will now let those transactions go through but they're going to require that holdback of one and a half times uh, a system estimate in order for the property transfer to take place, in order for them to give mortgage money on the property. Hopefully I, that makes uh, sense and that's understandable to you all. That makes sense to me. Okay. All right, we're going back to chat. I was just checking. So we're one hour in. How's everybody doing? This is pretty good stuff, huh? Look at him. His voice is getting hoarse. <laughs> Okay, so this is uh, uh, um, an actual leach field being constructed. So most people have never seen this. It's a, it, when you're walking around and you're, you know that you're on top of a leach field, now you know it's under your feet. Um, a big hole in the ground is dug. Uh, after the engineer has, de has determined the soils and the water table, uh, an excavation is done. A foot and a half of this inch and three-quarter stone let me see if I can get my hand here so you can see. So it. that's, that's the, right oh, there, that yeah. green light is the thing. There you go. So um, this stone you see underneath the pipe is inch and three quarter stone. You get about a foot, foot and a half of that. And then on top of that goes those four inch perforated pipes, those white pipes. They are perforated. They have about three eighths inch holes at one o'clock and, and um, sorry, five o'clock and seven o'clock on, underneath on the other side of that four inch pipe. That's how the liquid gets from the distribution box into these pipes, and then that's how it leaches out into the stone and the soil. Okay, so now you have a pretty good idea of what a leach field looks like when it's under your feet and you can't see it. Okay, and there's a lot of purification that takes place in these stone underneath the pipes and more purification that takes place in the soils underneath the stone before it's returned to the groundwater. Okay, now newer types of leach fields. Um, and there are several reasons for why we have these man-made materials in our leach fields. Um, we're beginning to have some scarcity of, of natural gravel and sands and so forth, so that uh, companies are making these man-made materials uh, that are put in in lieu of stone. Um, this particular 
system on the upper left, uh, those are contactors. They're hollow, and uh, they, uh, they're they said to uh, do a better job at treating soils because they're hollow. There's a lot more oxygen in there. The bacteria that are in there like oxygen. They do a better job. And uh, you're, you're allowed uh, a lesser distance to groundwater when you put in that type of a system. Same thing with the one on upper right. Those things look like mattresses. They're man-made materials in lieu of stone. Um, there's a four-inch pipe that sits on top of them, the perforated pipe, and it leaches from the pipe into those um, into those units, and it's filtered out further before it reaches the sand and the environment. And again, another type of system lower left. Those are smaller contactors, uh, and they have a, a fabric over them. Normally, uh, a system gets pea stone put over the top of it. That's three eighths inch stone to prevent soils from washing into the leach field because you want that leach field to remain porous so that oxygen is in there and water can percolate through it. So that's filter fabric on top of the leach field. It's very similar to the Tyvek that you use, landscaping Tyvek, okay? And lower right is a, a system with contactors and leach trenches. So again, in this in this particular system, uh, the soils evidently are very good, so you don't need this whole area to be leach field. So you have just leach trenches, okay? okay. Yes. So back to the Lord and Taylor thing. If if you have a customer, then they said, well, I'm not buying this property if it's going to have a mound when you replace the system. So you can put in uh, these, it's a drip irrigation system. And you can see it's near it's near a pond or a lake or the sh or the shore. So this could be, I think, for you, Eileen, right? You had Eileen, you had mentioned something about being right by the water. So if if the uh, engineer has determined that water table is high, and you're going to end up with a mound here, then you can uh, spend more money on your system. You can, if you want to look good, you go to Lord and Taylor. If you want to look good in your septic system, you spend more money and and put in one of these types of systems. Um, it's drip irrigation, they call it, as opposed to a four inch pipe. Those purple tubes that you see in the middle of that leach field, they're, they're, about, they're about three eighths inches in diameter and they have little pinholes in the bottom. And they're, the liquid is forced, first of all, the effluent is purified pretty well so that not a lot of solids make it into these little pipes. And uh, so the product coming into these pipes is, is a pretty pure product. So you don't need a lot of separation to groundwater. So um, you can put in this type of a system. Uh, and somebody asked the question uh, earlier, well, how much more expensive are these systems than a conventional system? They're anywhere from five to $15,000 more. So the average cost of a, of a conventional septic system is about 20 grand. Uh, these systems, uh, you know, they're going to go you twenty-five to to thirty-five thousand, um, but they look better, right? Go to Lord and Taylor if you want to look better. So, by the way, guys, I was just uh, putting together the list to send out for the the new agent or the all agent training. I like to call it the Rise training next week. So, I don't know if any of you guys are going, but there's still time to register. So, the. So just so you know, if you want to be like a Lord and Taylor salesperson, <laughs> <laughs> then come to my all agent training. I think it's next Wednesday. So double check. Okay. It's a great class. And Katie, you took it. You can tell them. All right. On to you. Okay. So this is, uh, these are a couple of areas where that those drip irrigation systems were installed. And uh, if, if you were installing a conventional system in this left slide, that tree would definitely be a goner. And I know that that's about a thousand dollar removal, just that one tree. It's going to cost you a thousand dollars to remove that. And probably some of those other trees on the right side and possibly some in the back also. So roughly a thousand dollars a tree to remove. This drip irrigation system can go around trees, close to trees, um, and, and it'll, it'll be covered, covered over with soil. This is just to show you, um, when it was installed, how they can go pretty close to a tree and you don't have to remove the tree. Slide on the right, that's a pretty steep slope. And I'm sure that 
there were variances that were got were had from the town health department to put this leach field so close to the home, but you could not put a conventional leach field in this area. Steep slope underneath the deck, whereas with this drip irrigation system, the town with a special request will allow you to put it there, okay? Innovative and alternative systems. There was a right. question about yeah, that. Yeah, let's see who was that asked that question. You can keep talking. I'll find them. Okay. So there are a number of them, different technologies, Singular, Fast, Advantex, and other aerobic treatment units. They're called aerobic treatment units. And the reason that they're called that is this is a, a this is a septic tank. It's green and it's made of polyethylene, but it's still a septic tank. In the compartment on the left, that is a holding tank, just like your conventional septic tank. <laughs> and it, it does it, it does a certain amount of treatment there and it's some separation. And then it sends things into compartment number two, which is in the middle. There's an air pump in compartment number two, and it pumps air into the effluent in that compartment. Uh, and the reason that we have air in that compartment is that Aerobic bacteria, which like oxygen, they do a lot better job. They treat the effluent a lot quicker and faster and, and do a better job and eat more so that this particular system will put out a purer product as you move toward compartment number three on the right. So a lot of oxygen is pumped into compartment number two. The aerobic bacteria do their job. They're very lively. They eat as much as they can and they have oxygen and they're very healthy. They send it in, they send the effluent into com, or the effluent is sent into compartment number three. And then through a filter, that white unit contains a couple of filters and then out into the environment the, through the pump chamber or the distribution box. And then about 50% of the stuff that's in compartment number three is returned to compartment number one and is run through the whole system again. So it's like doing a double wash. So this system puts out a pretty pure product, close to drinking water quality. And when you have this type of a system, there's mandatory maintenance. You have to maintain it. You have to prove that you maintain it. You have to, the, the maintenance contractor has to send forms into the health department along with testing of the effluent. The, t the effluent has to be tested at a lab and the reports sent in to the health department to prove that this system is doing its job because you're in a high, a highly sensitive area near a well, a pond, a river, uh, or high groundwater area. Okay. All along the coast in Rhode Island, uh, you're required to put in these types of systems because uh, it's state law. And there are many areas in Massachusetts where these types of systems are required. And you're going to see more and more of them in your travels. Okay. Don't be afraid of them. If they're well taken care of uh, and well maintained, uh, your system is going to last a long time. Wow. Marilyn says, wow, I like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So if you're doing a walk around in, in a property and you're walking around in squishy, stinky soil or black soil, and, and you know you're over the leach field, chances are that system is not going to pass a Title V inspection. That means that if you think back to that sketch way back where we showed a, a leach field, the bottom of that leach field is clogged up and the liquid isn't going through the leach field into the groundwater. The bottom is clogged up, and the only way for that liquid to go is up. So it will. If the bottom is of your leach field is clogged, it's going to come up, and in in uh, in drastic cases, it'll come up over the ground, run down the driveway. So again, if you're wa walking around and your your sneakers are getting wet, or your your um, your feet are getting wet, if you have those uh, open shoes, uh, probably a failed septic system. So when we do a Title V inspection, we do a bunch of things. Um, we'll do research uh, with the homeowner or the realtor or both. We'll ask a bunch of questions and fill out an intake sheet. 
which tells us a lot of information about the septic system. So before we get to the home, we know quite a bit about the septic system. If the homeowner knows where it's located, how old it is, how often it's been pumped, how many people live in the home, and, and things of that nature. A whole series of questions, how many bedrooms and all of that. Um, we verify a lot of that information at the health department with whatever paperwork they have on file, plans uh, and water table information and so forth. And any of you can, can get that type of information from any health department. It's all public record. Prior inspection reports or current design plans or as-built plans. And it would behoove you to, to do that in your, in your spare time or if you're near a, a, a town hall. Go into the health department and pull information on a property that you're interested in. And, and uh, just look at the uh, design plans and the septic plans and the as-built. A lot of information there. So after we... Actually, why don't you talk about that? Like, okay. Just a quick segue. A lot of times people will say, um, does it pass Title V or doesn't it pass Title V? And then you'll have clients that will say, how old is Title V? What kind of Title V is it? What What is the septic like? And they will ask a lot more questions. So the town hall is a great place for them to get information. Would you say? Absolutely. Absolutely. Get to know your friends at town hall. Yes. And uh, the people that work in the offices at the health departments are pretty knowledgeable. And um, the uh, the more knowledgeable person would be the health agent. So if you have questions, oftentimes your people working in the office can answer a number of them. But perhaps the more technical questions, um, you could ask the health agent or you should ask the health agent. And most of them are very helpful, as are the people that work in the offices, okay? They, uh, they're public servants, and they like to help people. So after we've done the, uh, the interview with the homeowner and or the realtor, sometimes we do interviews with, with uh, neighbors if, if, uh, if the home is vacant or the people are not around and there's not a lot of information available. And I'm sure you, as realtors, you've, you've probably done the same thing. Uh, neighbors sometimes book quite a bit about a home. It might have belonged to their... Um, it's, yeah, that's why we make people drive away before we drive away. <laughs> 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 when we're looking at houses. Oh but God. seriously, neighbors can be a very good source of information. So Sarah says they have towns that have mandatory well water testing results to complete the Title V process in town. Sure. Yeah. We have some towns that we have the... The mandatory well water testing. Yep, yeah, yeah, we do. We do. Lakeville is one of them. Um, Rochester, Marion, they require well water testing for a Title V inspection. Um, so just a quick funny story. So I was um, looking for a friend of mine one day, and uh, um, I was just taking a walk, and, and I, I see a homeowner where my, my friend uh, lived, and I'm calling out his name, and uh, – gentleman came out and he said, uh, uh, well, he doesn't live here any longer. He lives uh, four houses down with my ex-wife. So, <laughs> so you know, yeah. sometimes you have to be a little careful. That's a true story. Um, okay, so after we've done our paper research, town hall, interviews with the homeowners and so forth, we have to, we have to take a spin through the house, uh, check for a garbage disposal or not, check to see where the laundry discharges to. We have to count number of bedrooms, and we have to go down cellar and do some things down there. We have to see if there's a sump pump or not. That slide on the upper left is a, a sealed top sump pump. Yep. And the reason we look uh, at a sump pump is uh, it tells us information about water table. Is the water table at or near the cellar floor level or not? So if a house does not have a sump pump, that's an indication that water table is low there. If uh, a house has a, a sump pump or two or three, then that's an indication that water table is fairly high. And uh, um, that tells us uh, information about the bottom of the leach field in relation to the water table. Again, the reason for that is we have to show that the leach field is above water table. So let's see, a couple of questions popped up here. We have towns that are mandatory water testing. Yes, we do. Um, will, will my septic fail if I have a disposal? 
The sellers had one when my hubby uh, purchased it 10 years ago. So, um, so hopefully that disposal got taken out uh, when you moved in. Um, it, it didn't do the septic system uh, any good if there was a disposal there. Uh, it depends on how long it was there and how long they, uh, the, the disposal was discharging into the leach field. And, and at this point, so I like to talk about uh, a septic system is, is made to break down solids and, and it's made to break down our waste, what we waste into the toilets and so forth. To be very, This gets really basic at this point. Septic systems are designed to, uh, to, to, to break down our waste. They're not made to break down food. So when you have a garbage disposal, you're sending food into the septic tank. Septic tanks are designed for us to break down the food. So if you picture that sketch we had way back with the house and the septic tank and the distribution box on the leach field, you got to stick a person in the house to eat the food, to break it down, to run it through our bodies, into the toilets, into the septic tank. So we're at the very beginning of the treatment train. We have to break down the food waste it into the septic tank, and then through the whole process into the groundwater, okay? Most septic systems are not designed for raw food. Hence, that's what comes out of a garbage disposal is raw food. You can have a garbage disposal in a septic system. It has to be designed for it, and it'll say right on the plans whether it's designed for it or not. You're going to have to have a larger septic tank and usually a compartmented tank, and you're going to have to have a larger leach field. But again, you cannot have a garbage disposal unless your system is designed for it. So he wants it replaced, but I'm advising him against it. Do not put another garbage disposal in there um, if it's not designed for it, and most systems are not. Okay. It's a common sense issue. We need to break down food before we send it into the septic tank. Okay, so after we've uh, done our uh, walk around in the house, we go down cellar. We have to do some measurements down there. Uh, if there's a water softener, which is the middle slide top, um, water softeners cannot discharge to a septic system. Uh, that's state law. They have to go into a separate drain. They can go into a sump pump drain, or they can uh, be installed in a um, in a blind drain outside somewhere, not into the septic tank. Most of them run with salt. They dump salt into the uh, into their uh, into their discharge pipes. Salt kills good bacteria, and it sends too much water into the septic tank at one time, stirring everything up. So they're outlawed as far as discharging into a septic tank. They can go anywhere else. Upper right slide is a, a, a picture of a sewer pipe, a four inch PVC sewer pipe that goes out to the septic tank. And again, the, most septic tanks are 10 feet, they have to be a minimum of 10 feet away from the foundation, the outside of the foundation wall. Lower left and middle uh, lower, is a, our inlet and outlet pipes in the septic tank. So we have to open up two covers on the septic tank, inlet and outlet, and we have to open up the distribution box. We have to check the levels to make sure that those components are in operating condition, that they're not deteriorated, and that those, those T-pipes that you see in the septic tank are there and operating properly, and that the liquid level is where it's supposed to be in the septic tank. Um, on the right, lower right, that's a distribution box, and we have to check the liquid level in there, and we have to check to make sure that that box is intact and not deteriorated. So as experienced Title V inspectors, we uh, advise our realtors that as soon as you get a call on a property, the first thing that you ask your seller to do is to have a Title V inspection if the system if the property has a septic system. If you're dealing with it up front, if it's a failure, then you can figure out how you're gonna handle it, increase the price of the property, make a deal with the sellers, 
fix it beforehand or not. There are a bunch of decisions you can make if you know the condition of the septic system before you even list a property and before you put a price on it. It, it solves a lot of heartache and headache if you deal with it right up front. I'm sorry. So the purposes of a Title V inspection, to identify which systems are failing to operate properly, um, to educate homeowners about the importance of proper septic system maintenance. We, we welcome anybody uh, to witness our Title V inspections, buyers, sellers, realtors, uh, whomever. I have a question for you. I'm sure, sorry. sure. So it says, when will my septic fail if I have a disposal? Yep. Oh, you got that one. Okay, then it says it's broken but won't replace it. He wants to replace it. I'm advising against it and gotcha. Okay, you got those ones then. Yep. And okay. there's, there's a ton of information online if you want to research that too, from uh, URI uh, or any state health department. And many town health departments will have info on that too. Okay, so to provide an objective basis for requiring upgrade. So if, if we inspect a system and it's, for instance, it's a conditional pass, that means that some part of the septic system needs replacing, and it's usually a fairly minor repair. Could be a leaky tank or a leaky distribution box or a crushed pipe or something to that effect. So a conditional pass means that once a system has this minor repair done, then it can pass an inspection with the approval of the health department. By the way, somebody gave me a double thumbs up for you. They emailed me. Oh, oh thank you. Sarah, give thank me a double you. thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you. We uh, we know our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yari does. We can't use that other word. <laughs> so uh, regulations specify that the owner or operator of a property is responsible for the inspection and maintenance. So that brings up a point that Katie asked me to cover. So if, if you're listing a property and the homeowners uh, don't have any money and they tell you, listen, um, we want to we want to sell this house, but we don't have any money. So um, if the you if you want to have this septic system inspected, we know we're responsible for having that done, but we can't pay for it. So either you can pay for it, like you can have your buyer pay for it. We're not paying for it. We'll we'll order it that it will prove that it be done, but we're not paying for it. And if it's broken, we're not going to fix it. So you can make you can make a a, a negotiation with a buyer. Um, you can tell your buyer that this person doesn't have any money and can't afford a, a, an inspection. So if you want to, if you're interested in this property, you're going to have to pay for the inspection. And if it's broke, you're going to have to pay for the repair. Is a one ply septic friendly toilet paper better than a three ply? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, three ply. so all the parties were at Uncle Al's growing up and we all went to his house and we're like, what's this paper? <laughs> <laughs> this hurts. Where's Uncle Al? <laughs> Yes, one flat and only three sheets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No, oh the three gosh. sheets thing isn't true. But I, a single I'm ply, a the what? single single ply toilet tissue is true. Absolutely, one hundred percent. It's just less volume going into your tank. I mean, if you're going to use the the puffy stuff, uh, you're going to pump often because it builds up in there. It doesn't deteriorate as quickly as single ply. Um, and and when we open up a septic tank, we know what's happening in the house. We know if you're using double or triple ply toilet tissue. We know if you're using the so-called septic safe wipes, which are not septic safe, they don't deteriorate. And many pumpers will charge you more money if you put wipes down your drain because they have to pay extra at the uh, sewer treatment plant where they dump their trucks. That's one thing that most people don't realize. No. These pumpers that pump out your septic tank, what do they do with it? It, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't it go into a swimming swimming supply? <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't evaporate. Where does it go? So they dump it at a municipal treatment plant, either New Bedford, Taunton. So uh, there's one in, in Plymouth. There's the one Chickpea? in Wareham. Chickpea, because that's where they do their. They're in Chickpea, yeah. Nope. So Chickpea wherever you wherever your big. Uh, oh hi, Chickpea. Well, it's nice out there. Um, so uh, yeah, so these pumpers they dump it at a municipal treatment plant. Okay, so the, the the good news about the stuff that they're dumping is it's been pre-treated, so they're they're 
these municipal treatment plants, their systems don't have to work on it as 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 much as the stuff that is flushed down the drains in these homes and properties in the cities. Okay, but all septic trucks dump at a, a municipal treatment plant. Uh, okay, so regulations specify that the uh, owner uh, is responsible for maintenance and so forth. But you can make a deal with your with your with your buyer to pay for the uh, inspection and the repair of the systems. So the uh, step one in uh, doing a Title V inspection, we've covered some of this already, collect background on the septic system and the water table. Collect information and measurements inside the house and number of bedrooms and so forth. Locate and uncover the septic tank and distribution box and other components. If there's a pump chamber, we have to open that up also and determine that the pump and alarms are operated properly, operating properly. We take measurements of what's inside the septic tank and what's inside the distribution box, and then we take measurements from corners of the home to these covers so that after we do our sketch as part of a Title V inspection report, anybody can find the covers on this septic system. We just take a couple of tape measures one from each corner of the house and where they cross over a cover. We make note of those measurements so that anybody with our sketch or, or any good Title V inspector's sketch can find the system if they're covered over. The best thing to happen is that you have risers over your septic components so that you don't have to dig for them and you don't have to look around for them. You have a little tool, right, that can find them? Yes, we have several tools that yes. can find them. We have a probe. Um, which is like a crowbar, only it's a little fancier. We have um, metal locators, which will uh, locate the metal that's uh, inside a septic tank or a distribution box. And we also have sewer cameras, which is, they're, they're endoscopes. They're made by the same company that make endoscopes. They're just a little larger. <laughs> and if, and if you, we could you, go in bad places with that one. Yeah, yeah, well, we always advertise that if, we do endoscopes on the weekends. We clean we clean up our equipment properly, and we do endoscopes for people on the weekends, but we don't charge as much money as the hospitals and doctors do. <laughs> Not really, but so it's the same equipment. So we can find any part of your system with our sewer camera. It's just a rod with a camera on it. We send it down a pipe. We watch it on a screen, and we can locate any part of your septic system without digging it up. That doesn't let you not dig up parts <laughs> of the system. Said, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so Tori has a question. She says, please expand on negotiating with buyer okay. for inspection and replacement. Okay. So so um, you have your, your, your elderly couple, and they call you and say, listen, we think we want to sell our home, but if it fails, we're not selling it. So there's a, there's a couple of things. That brings up another point, too. So if they tell you, well, if it fails, we're not going to sell it no matter what. So you can have a voluntary assessment of your septic system done. Voluntary assessment. It's written right into the law. We do the same work as a Title V inspection, only we don't report it to the town. The only people that we report the results to are the people that the homeowner tells us to. Okay? Voluntary assessment. So if your homeowner says, if it fails, we're not selling it, then you have a voluntary assessment done. If it fails, then you don't sell the home unless you negotiate something with them. Or um, you, um, let's see, I had another point I was going to bring there. So if, oh, so if it passes, then we just click on the report that it passes and then everybody's happy and you can sell the home. So to complete a Title V inspection report, it has to be, for it to be official, it has to come from the inspector, number one, so we can't give it to a homeowner and the homeowner walks, deliver it it, walks it down to the health department because they can, they can make changes you on make it, right? Fake IDs. Right, fake <laughs> IDs. So it has to come from the health in, from the Title V inspector and it has to be in the health department within 30 days of the inspection, okay? It's good for two years from the date of inspection. It's good for three years if you pump your system once a year. So if your system is inspected, you have it pumped. One year from that date, you have it pumped. One year from that date, you have it pumped. So that's two years. That'll uh, 
extend the validity of your Title V inspection out to three years. So Amadine asks, if if it fails involuntary assessment, don't they really have to fix it anyways because of health and, and uh, you know, e e I think she used the word e ecological yeah. uh, it, reasons? That's a great question. That's up to the homeowner. That's right. entirely up to the homeowner. If, if they're environmentally conscious, uh, then it's up to them. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not bound to report it to anybody. Right. So. Good point. Good yeah. question. Yeah. Sorry, did, was your answer about that answered appropriately? So, so yeah, sometimes the sellers say that they, um, they are not doing it. And you'll see in the listing sheets, it says it's the buyer's responsibility. Right. So that buyer, a lot of times will, again, that they will either, you know, make arrangements or they will have the hold back at closing. Or if they're cash, they will buy it cash and they will fix it after. Right. And and that the law is that when the property conveys, right, the inspection needs to be done. Correct. So, you know, uh, the, it's normally the mortgage company that does the uh, the oversight on this. Right. So a lot of times that is something that falls through the cracks a little bit, you know, but that is that is what the rule is, Tori. But you'll see that a lot out there, you know. Um, well, that question was great, Sarah. Sarah sure. Great. So, so that brings up a couple of things. So, there, there was uh, information out there that if you if you did a cash deal, you don't need a Title Five inspection. That is not that true. That has never been true. Correct. It's never been true. Um, the deal with that, and Katie just brought it up. So, if you do a cash deal and it fails, um, and you're not going to, and you're not dealing with a bank, then um, you're not dealing with the one and a half times in an escrow account and all that to fix the system. Okay. All right. Does that make sense? However, the, technically, because you have in written words that the buyer is responsible, you know, when that town comes looking, it, it's now the, the, the buyer's responsibility. But they do, in fact, need to do it in the six months. Right. I think yep. the six months to do it. Yep. If it's if it's a health hazard, if it's running over the ground then um, they're going to require you to have uh, a contact with an engineer pretty much immediately and get the ball rolling. If it's a health hazard. Okay, Title V requirements. Um, a Title V inspection is required at time of property transfer um, or within two years. That's just a, another way of saying that a Title V inspection is good for two years, okay? Three if it's pumped once a year. And we, we, we dealt with the weather issue already. If weather precludes an inspection, um, you can have up to six months to do the inspection. We don't run into that. It's rare around here that you're going to run into that. Uh, a Title V inspection is required for a change in use or expansion of use of a facility served by the septic system. Okay. If a building permit or an occupancy permit is required. So if you're going to change the footprint of a building at a bedroom, uh, change the use. If you're going to change it from a residence to a, a medical office uh, or add a, a hairdressing salon into a residence, you're going to re a Title V inspection is going to be required. And in, in some of those instances, the town is going to require an upgrade to the system. So an upgrade of the system would be required if it's a cesspool. So if you're changing use or expanding a property and it's a cesspool, you're going to be required to upgrade the system. Some towns, as we said before, automatically require upgrade of a cesspool at a property transfer. So if the cash buyer does not require the seller to have a passing title five, then the buyer would be responsible by law within the period of time. Yes, yes. Autumn. Yes. Absolutely. Good, yep. good, good um, summary for us. Yep. Yes. Thank you. That's the buyer's responsibility. Yep. So, um, an upgrade of a system naturally. Okay, I'm going I'm, I'm to jump in. I'm sorry. Sure. So from a real estate standpoint, okay, you want to make sure that you have paperwork that clearly identifies that, that, that's, that the buyer has agreed to do that. So if they don't do it within six months down the road or whatever, and all of a sudden the Board of Health is getting grouchy about, you know, well, did they know they had to do it? What was the thing? La, 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 you know, whatever. You have a clear paper trail and you minimize your risk on that. Right. Okay. So that's just a little... Um, Realtor FYI. Sure. Great thought. So a system has to be upgraded naturally if it meets failure criteria. And we'll talk about the failure criteria in an upcoming slide. Um, is if the if if it's a significant threat to public health, safety, or the environment. So 
if if the system is leaking up to the surface and running down the driveway into the street, that's a threat to public health and a system is going to have to be upgraded. Uh, if there's a court order that it be upgraded, I've only seen that once in my thousand years of uh, experience. <laughs> it's thousands of inspections, not thousands of years. Okay. Um, let's see. Title V requirements, not requiring an inspection. Transaction, property transactions, not requiring inspection. Taking a security interest in a property. Refinance. A Title V inspection is not required for a refi. However, some banks are requiring it. They can make their own rules if they're lending you money, right? So uh, more, not more and more, but some banks are starting to require a Title V inspection for a refi. It's kind of a common sense issue, I think. Uh, change in the form of ownership among the same owners. So if you're if there are two or three owners on a property and there's, um, you're taking out one owner, you don't need a Title V inspection. If you're adding or deleting a spouse to the deed, or if you're selling to your spouse, or your child, or your father, or your son or daughter, or whomever, immediate family, property transfer, you don't need a Title V inspection. However, if your son or daughter, or brother or sister, uh, is buying your property and they're going to a bank for a mortgage, most banks will require a Title V inspection. Their rules, not law, but their rules. They tell you, if you want our money, you have to have a Title V inspection. That's the practicality of that law. Inspection not required at time of transfer if there is a certificate of compliance from the town. So if you have a new septic system, uh, and there is a certificate of compliance on file at the health department that takes the place of a Title V inspection, and it has the same time frame as an inspection. So a COC, as it's called, certificate of compliance, is good for two years. It's good for three years if your system is pumped once a year, okay? So a certificate of, certificate of compliance, the same uh, weight as a Title V inspection. And usually you only see that on new properties. And the only Most of the times that I've seen it are people move into a, a new home and they get a sudden uh, job transfer, for instance. So uh, just happened to a house that my daughter was looking at. Um, they were there about a year and a half and they get transferred out to Illinois, two teachers. And uh, so they didn't need a Title V inspection, okay? Practically speaking, if it's six months or more, many banks will require another one. They can make their own rules, okay? Um, let's see. Okay, 20 minutes. Yeah, I think we're pretty good. Um, the owners of a uh, system that have an enforceable agreement with the approving authority to hook up to sewer. Okay, so if there's sewerage available and say the system has failed, and if there's a sewer project plan to come into that area within five years, you um, you will have to have a Title V inspection, but you the town will allow you not to fix that system if sewerage is coming in within a five-year period. If your system is not operating very well, the town might require you to pump your system on a regular basis so that it doesn't become a hazard. And they will issue you a, a letter or a statement saying that you have a waiver to fix your septic system if sewerage is coming in, okay? But you will be required to hook up to the sewer once it is built. And if there's a, a DEP-approved uh, regular inspection program, and I only know of one town that had that, and I don't think they still do. So in other words, if a town has rules that your system has to be inspected on a regular basis, then uh, the inspection will not be required to properly tra property transfer. Things like condominiums and large systems, um, they have to be inspected on a regular basis anyhow. And the same with, uh, with uh, many of these IA systems. They have to be checked on a regular basis. So, um, that will preclude uh, Title V inspections 
at a time of transfer. There's usually one on file anyhow. Individual towns can make rules stricter than state law. Um, so, for instance, we just talked about some of the towns require a well test at every Title V inspection. State law requires that a well be tested if the leach field is less than 100 feet away from a well. But towns can make rules stricter. Some towns required require that systems be pumped, that risers and filters be installed at time of inspection. Uh, most towns have a town fee that is in addition to a Title V inspection fee. So our company charges $525 for a septic inspection. Along with that, we have to clip a check to the report anywhere from $25 to $125. Um, the most expensive towns around are Dartmouth. They're $90. Uh, the, most inspection, uh, the most expensive town around is Berkeley. Some towns require that the health agent come out to inspections. Berkeley is one of them. A Christian is another. Uh, the so well water. They're in Pioneer Valley. Say again? They're in Pioneer Valley. Pioneer Valley. Yeah. Out, out west? Yeah. I don't know uh, too much about the towns out there, whether they require agents to be present, but I'm sure there are some. And I'm so sure. Mix, right? Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure there are some towns that, that have their own rules that are stricter than the, than the town rules. More and more towns are starting to require filters and regular and pumping at the time of inspection. Um, let's see. Some towns are requiring reinspection uh, when a property is vacant, and some towns are requiring a deep hole water test if a system is five years or older. That adds about a thousand dollars to the cost of a septic inspection. So the outcomes of a Title V inspection, there are four of them. Pass, if we meet all the criteria, um, everybody's happy, it passes. If it needs some minor repair, it's called a conditional pass. That report is submitted to the health department. Some licensed contractor has to pull a permit to fix the system. Once that's done, the town will inspect it, and they will allow that system to be passed. Needs further evaluation by a local approving authority. That's usually to do with distance from a well to a leach field. If it's less than 100 feet, the well has to be tested. If the water test comes back fine, then that system can pass, but it's the town health department that will say it's passing. And they will issue a letter or a statement or both saying that it passes after a water test. But they could require that that well be tested on a yearly basis, okay? And then failure. If a system fails, that's the word that nobody wants to hear. But um, that's a, a protection for the environment and for the buyer. So a system can fail if there's a backup into a septic tank or into the leach field or into the cellar. Um, Discharge or effluent of effluent to the ground surface if you're walking around in squishy soil. Um, if every time a pumper pumps a system, he has to report it to the health department. If there are more than four pumps on a particular property, that is failure criteria in and of itself without anything being inspected. So we've got health agents in Franklin County. Uh, let's see. So Frank, Franklin County requires health agents there. Ah, okay. Wow. Okay. So, uh, okay. I wonder if Franklin County has one agent for a number of towns. It sounds like they do. And there are, right. Neshoba Valley has a regional health department, uh, and there are several others around the state. Uh, let's see. If the soil absorption system is below the high groundwater elevation, that is a failure. Um, proximity to a well or surface water supply without any testing being done. Northampton requires pH there for inspection. So more and more towns are making more and more rules that are stricter, and it's, it's all to protect the environment. And we'll see more and more of it as time goes on. We'll see more stricter inspection criteria, and we'll see more and more of these uh, Alternative, innovative, and alternative septic systems. There, 
they're, they're wanting to protect the environment more and more. Uh, large cesspools, uh, some towns uh, outlaw cesspools in and of themselves, okay? The state of Rhode Island, just for your information, has a, um, if any of you people do business in Rhode Island, the state of Rhode Island has a mandatory uh, cesspool replacement law. Within one year of, of property transfer has to be replaced, or if it's a health hazard, you have to start rolling on the repair right away. Um, in the case of failed systems, there there is there are rejuvenation systems. I don't recommend it for uh, for a property transfer. Um, it is recommend it could be recommended for a person that isn't going anywhere that's keeping their home. Uh, the cost is a lot less. It's ten thousand as opposed to fifteen to forty five. But I don't recommend it for a property transfer. I feel like we're talking about facials. <laughs> facials. <yeah. laughs> I'll take the rejuvenation, please, <laughs> for ten thousand. Oh my God! All right, yeah, I'm sorry. Really. I'm sorry for distracting. No, that's fine. Um, let's see. So we are about twelve minutes away. So, uh, septic rejuvenation. There are different technologies out there. You can check that out online. They do the same work as an aerobic treatment unit, basically, and they can rejuvenate a system. They're pretty much money back guarantee. So when you're dealing with septic systems, whether it's your own or your customers, um, just encourage them to take care of their systems. The people at University of Rhode Island tell us, if you take care of your system and add filters and risers and pump it regularly and not abuse it, your system is going to last indefinitely, right? It says indefinitely on this slide. That comes from the experts at University of Rhode Island. I'm quoting them. That's not my information. Filters, risers, regular pumping, and don't abuse it. Indefinite as opposed to 16 to 20 years. It's good investment. So tell your homeowners, if, if you're dealing with people that they're telling you, well, I'm probably going to sell in five years or 10 years, uh, encourage them to have a voluntary assessment and start taking care of their systems now. They might need some minor repair, so they could save themselves an awful lot of money and an awful lot of heartache. So one thing here, he just said that the, the yearly maintenance is mm -hmm. 150 a year. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I feel when you're selling properties and they're like, oh, I'd rather have town water, town sewer. And you're like, you don't get a sewer bill when you have Title V, when you have septic systems, right? right? 150 bucks a year versus thousands of dollars is a big difference. Uh, that's I think. right. That's right. And, and, you know, the, the information is out there. Septic systems generally do a better job for our environment. If you have a major weather event, a major rainstorm, a foot or two of water like they do in some states, like they just had down in the Carolinas, your municipal treatment plants get overflowed. You get two feet of water in there. They're, pump, they're pushing out raw sewage right into the river, stream, bay, or brook, or whatever. Uh, in a conventional septic system, Generally, that does not happen. So yeah. they're better for our environment. Good point about the sewer bills. Yes, it is a good point. Uh, how do you maintain your system? Uh, if Don't abuse it. Don't send anything down there that doesn't belong there. We uh, inspected a septic system in Rochester a few years ago. They were uh, antibacterial soaps in every room in the house. They moved from the city, four people, two kids and two adults, Antibacterial soaps in every room in the house, laundry, dishwashing, all antibacterial. She did her own hair coloring. That's harsh chemical. So they killed all the bacteria in the septic tank, pushing all the solids out to the leach field. Two years, it was failed. Yeah. True story. My friend did, her, her, her husband used a lot of those flushable wipes. That and too. they were just completely stunned that their septic system failed. Yep. And then I think it was you who did it. And you said, well, they use the wipes. Yep. And it was just something that, you know, they had kind of gotten in the habit of. They thought they were biodegradable or whatever, septic safe. And they were surprised to find out that, that they, in fact, weren't. They're not. Some states are outlawing that advertising on these packages that say septic safe wipes. Some states are outlawing that advertising. Remember, follow Uncle Al's rules. Single ply, three sheets. <laughs> I don't care what he says. I know it was three sheets. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Keep going. I'm sorry. Do's and don'ts. Just pull some of that stuff up online. We won't go through all of them, but, you know, paintbrushes. Tell your, your homeowners they're fixing up their home to get ready to sell it. Don't wash their latex paintbrushes 
down their drains. It's going to, we're going to see the colors in the septic tank and it's going to clog up your leach field. Use quicker. your hose. Use your hose, do it outside in a five gallon bucket with soapy water and dump it outside. Don't use any of these plastics or, or uh, man made materials, wipes, condoms, feminine products. They don't go away. We see them. Uh, and again, if there's excessive in their f uh, filters from cigarettes, they don't go away either. We see everything in the septic tank. And just because the package says biodegradable, don't necessarily believe it. How do you maintain your systems? We talked about many of these, low water devices, single ply, leaky faucets and toilets can kill a septic system pretty quickly. Uh, regular septic tank pumping, distribution box pumping. Uh, one year, every year, if you have a lot of people in the home or if you have a garbage grinder, two to three years, depending on how many people are in the house and, and how careful you are. Use a washing machine filter, we'll show you one. Divert rainwater away from the uh, leach field. Don't let anybody drive anything over the leach field except for a, a riding lawnmower, that's it. No cars, trucks, or anything else. And install risers and use filters. And, and you know, consult with our company as far as maintenance and taking good care of your septic system. So what's an effluent filter? These are effluent filters. This is a clean one on top, and it's about uh, two feet long, and it slips right into that outlet pipe of the septic tank. So it's a filter. These are little slots. Uh, everything that leaves the septic tank has to pass through these slots. So it'll take out most of the solids that try to leave. Do they work? This just came out of a septic tank. All that solid would end up out in your distribution box and leach field and kill it prematurely. Seeing is believing. Do you need a filter in your septic system? Yes, you do. Common sense. This is not brain surgery. This lady didn't know she had one. She lived alone. Enough liquid was making it by this uh, filter so that it didn't back up into the house. They will back up if you don't clean them. That's the bad news. The good news is they do clog up because they collect all these solids that are trying to go out to your leach field. They work. Believe me, they work. That's me, by the way, in my younger days. Oh, geez. Yeah. I was trying to figure out which one of you it was. And that's me. I'm like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I left my hair color out of that one. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so... Do filters really work? Here's a distribution box with a filter in the septic tank. This distribution box did not have a filter. So a lot all of these filters have to be cleaned. And they should be yearly unless there's a lot of people in the house. Who can't do the homeowners cleaning themselves? Or do they need They can. We don't recommend it. Um, we recommend that you have a professional do it. But if you do do it yourself, you can do it with gloves. Uh, and if you do do it yourself, own two filters. Pull, pull the dirty one up. Stick a clean one in, hose the dirty one off right inside the tank, and then stick it under your porch outside or hang, hang it behind your tool shed to air out. And, uh, yeah, you can do it yourself, but the best deal is to have a, a professional do it. It's kind of stinky. Okay. Um, so all these solids make their way out to your distribution box if you don't have a filter, and then they go out the pipes into your leach field, killing it prematurely. This system was not pumped on a regular basis. There was no filter, and they never pumped their distribution box. Most of this is solid. You can't even see the outlet pipes because they're underwater, and the leach field is clogged. So I show you this. This is an illegal laundry drain, and I show you this because this is what comes out of your washing machine. It'll take years for this to build up, but... On a daily basis, it sends a certain amount of soap scum and lint out into your out of your washing machine. So they make uh, laundry filters that will take out most of that stuff. It's a pretty easy install. Costs about uh, 250 to have one installed, and they're very easy to clean. And you take and clean them outside. There's a metal filter inside this plastic case. They definitely work. Um, with nine children in my house. We had a laundry filter, and um, they work, believe me. Risers and covers. We're pretty close to, we're going to be yeah. pretty close to our time, Kate. Okay. So risers and covers. This is a leach pit. We had to dig down about three feet to get to it. Um, the We talked to the homeowner. They weren't going anywhere. 
So they uh, installed, they had us install a riser over the leach pit. They had a crush pipe in the driveway. So this was a conditional pass. We fixed the crush pipe and we added filters and risers to the septic tank, which is in the side yard here. Rise, why, why put risers on? Because it allows for easier, cheaper maintenance, inspections, and pumping. Um, they're pretty nice looking, green plastic. They kind of fit in with your with your lawn. If you don't like looking at them, extend your mulch area right around it and cover it over with mulch so that you don't see it. Or you can put a fake rock over it, especially if your system is raised up. This is an IA system and the system is raised up a little. So you put a fake rock over it. It's made of fiberglass. You can't tell they're not real, believe me. First time I, I installed, and you can hide your keys there. You can hide your keys. <laughs> yes, I, I I brought one of these into a person's yard, and they thought I was Superman because they thought it was a real rock. Oh, true story. Oh my God. So why install risers and covers? Less invasive for pumping and maintenance and inspections. Regular pumping with no digging. It's cheaper. Your pumper is going to charge you money if you have to. If he has to dig it up for you, he or she has to dig it up. Less invasive, uh, faster and cheaper, less invasive for inspections. We covered all of that. So uh, this young man is up to his neck uh, on the top of a septic tank. So after we were done, these homeowners decided to have us install risers. So now it's just a matter of lifting up the green cover, and there's your filter right in the outlet of the septic tank. We have long hooks to reach down to get those filters out. I usually get that question. A mulch area, these people didn't want to look at these covers, so they just uh, had us uh, install it in the, in, over the tank in this mulch area, cover it over, you don't know they're there. Again, another uh, example of risers and covers. And okay. there we are. You guys so, had great questions. Thank you so much. Do you guys have any last final closing questions for Uncle Al? By the way, everybody calls him Uncle Al, so you can too. <laughs> He's lost his he's lost his one syllable name in this world. Okay. So I'm just gonna um all right, so there's Al's email address if you want to reach him. Now I do know that you guys gave me your email addresses, so we will send out the information for you guys. Uh thank you for hanging in there. I know that like sometimes this is not like super exciting, but you know what? It is really important to know because this is a big part of our job. And uh, the more that you can um, be a professional, right? We always say this, together we rise, right? And, and a uh, rising tide elevates all boats. And that's what we want. We all want to get better, okay? So thank you guys so much. And again, consider the class next week. I would love to meet you all because that's always my fun, my funnest thing about my job. All right, so I'm going to just take us off. Um, I have just one more thing to say. If you have any questions that come up in your travels about septic systems, please call me. Uh, our company doesn't charge for questions. And you can also call me as a fellow realtor at yeah, Bold five, Realty. 508-574-4431. Okay, so I'm going to say that's Uncle Al. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great day. And we'll see you next month. Okay. Bye-bye.